Good morning. I'm Anita Mann. Yes, my name is very unfortunate. And this is the 11 o'clock news at 7. <laughs> Tonight's main story is the war at sea. In the spring of 1917, America officially joined the Allied powers, but could not use their navy because of the German blockade. So it's like getting in the car to go on vacation, then realizing you forgot one of your kids. Because the naval war is against submarines, the Allied powers' navies have postponed developing battleships. In response, the Hasbro Toy Company is introducing its newest game, U-Boats. American scientists have developed underwater listening devices. Here is a short message from the developers. No walls, no walls, swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion, cause they are so awesome. <laughs> um, munitions experts have effectively developed depth charges. They came to this amazing idea after listening to an ACDC song. TNT. In November of 1917, two destroyers from Queenstown forced the surrender of the German submarine, the U-58. U-58? Oh, thank God, said the B-52s. When the U-52 surrendered, the Allied powers could not find any debris. They just assumed it had sunk. The same thing has happened to Houdini. And, but we'll never know where he hides. And before we move on, a quick word from our sponsor. And we're back! I now send it over to my co-anchor, Anders Strumpet, with the Battle of Jutland. Anders? Oh yeah, all these things look so hot right now. Mm. Ooh, Pella Lotna! Oh yeah! Anders! Mm. Hello, this is Anders Strumpet reporting on World War I, the Battle of Jutland. The Battle of Jutland took place on May 31st, 1916 at the Jutland Peninsula. The Battle of Jutland took place on May 31st, 1916 at the Jutland Peninsula, which is located off the coast of Denmark. The Battle of Jutland was a struggle between Germany and Great Britain that lasted six hours. Admiral Reinhard Scheer, a German naval officer, planned to arouse the desire to fight in the Brits by sending in battle cruisers in hopes that the Brits would send in the matching fleet from Rosif. Not only did the British Navy send in battle cruisers from Rosif, but the British Navy also sent in dreadnoughts from the Scapa Flow. After they heard of Germany's battle strategy to send in dreadnoughts to steam Britain's battle cruisers out. During the Battle of Jutland, Germany's fleet of dreadnoughts followed the battle north. So, so John Jellicoe sent his fleet west. Jo Both fleets met in a perpendicular formation called Crossing the T. Crossing the T was effective for the British because once they fired, only Germany's weaker ships at the front could answer back. Neither naval commander was told to make decisions by authorities in the homelands as strategic decisions were made independently. In total, 250 ships were involved in this naval struggle. On average, the Germans took 70, 27 hits in a time period of 10 minutes, while the British took, only took an average of 2. But, the Battle of Jutland is one of the most controversial naval battles of World War I, because the British lost more ships and men, but the Germans took more, took more hits to their ship, naval fleet. Not even today can we figure out who won. This is Anders Trumpet, signing off. Thank you, Anders. And now with an interview with Alan Flash. Hi, I'm Alan Flash, reporting for the 11 o'clock news at 7. I'm here in London today to interview a naval officer for the British Navy. Oh, here comes one now. Oh, sir, can I uh, get a quick interview? Quick interview. Uh, fine. So to start off, what are submarines and why are they so effective? Well, submarines are basically underwater tanks that are capable of launching devastating offensive underwater attacks. So what kind of armor makes them like a tank? They're protected by one foot of steel plate armor. Okay, so they're armored, but what makes them dangerous? They're dangerous because they have of their five cannon holes, which fire torpedoes that can easily destroy even the most armored warships. Do the British use submarines? Of course we do. These are unstoppable beasts used by us every day in the Great War. Do you know if any other countries use submarines? Yes, Germans use them, but call them a different name, U-boats. Germans take out our submarines every day of the Great War. What types of ships uh, did they destroy? Well, they destroyed battleships and supply ships coming to give us supplies. Really? How did the British government react to this? We react by, uh... Well, our government was furious, so we bumped up security by having ships being escorted. 
Now, every time an enemy submarine comes to attack, the escorts will see them before they are able to launch their attack. Well, what types of ships would be used as escorts? Many of the escorts are dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts? These ships are massive beasts, beasts that sail on top of the water rather than under the sea. So it's like a submarine, except it stays on the surface. Yes, but these have much more arm armor and weaponry, and are much bigger. Please continue. I cannot tell you much about the dreadnoughts because of their information is classified, but I can tell you that in comparison, if a regular ship is a kitten, then a dreadnought is a lion. Well, thank you for your time. Well, I'm off to my ship. I'm going off to sea. Well, good luck and Godspeed. Thank you, Alan. And now, another interview with Alan Flash, this time interviewing Robert Sh 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 Robert. And back with... Uh, Robert Shukumbobum, that's my name. Ro Robert Shukum... Shukumbobum. Him. Um, yeah, Shukumbobum. So, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the North Sea. Yes, I, I escaped the other day from the perilous lands of the North Sea. Oh, yes, the did. North... Yeah, I escaped. The North Sea, uh, obviously it was a war zone. It's a sea? And, yeah, yeah, it was a war zone sea. Um, not, not a B war zone, but a sea war okay. zone. So, anyways, uh, controlling the North Sea was a big part of uh, the German plan, because yeah. Germany, it, it was their main port. So they had to control well, so all their stuff. It. Yeah, that all their okay. stuff came and went. However, controlling the North Sea was also a big thing for the Allied powers. Really? And what they tried to do was they stopped the goods from oh, going I, into I Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Halt supply the blocked them. Okay. So uh, nothing could go in or out of Germany. Mm -hmm. So Germany was basically. Eventually, Germany was forced to surrender. Yeah, oh, okay. because they, they had, had no supplies yeah, they to didn't have them. anything. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for giving us your angle on that. And uh, yeah. you have a, you have an, um, you too, sir. A, a good day there. Yeah, you too, sir. Well, that's the news. I might need a man. This is Anders Trumpet. I'm Alan Flash. And if you've been seeing this in color, you might want to check your TV. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.